Hey guys, happy Tuesday and welcome to another Star Wars Shatterpoint video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be breaking down the Star Wars Shatterpoint gameplay uh, article that was put up yesterday uh, by the guys over at Atomic Mass Games. And joining me as ever to break down this uh, new information is Mr. Quinn Duggan. Quinn, how the hell are you doing, sir? Hello, yes, it is Tuesday. <laughs> um, more Shatterpoint is more, more? Gudra. More Shatterpoint is more Gudra. Um, no, 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 no. More, more Betterer, how dare you? More Betterer, sorry, yes, I do apologise. Honestly, basic yeah. English. <laughs> um, so we've got we, we, we've got a uh, we've got a document to go through or a transmission to go through, should I say? Uh, some interesting things that give us a bit more of an insight into the game as as they have done with most of these articles. Whilst it answers a lot of questions, I do still think that they then pose more questions <laughs> in also, them as well. Sometimes when they answer the questions, they are vague as balls. <laughs> they are. They are very vague. Anyway, let's jump over, Quinn, and let's take a quick look uh, at the uh, at the article itself. So as you can see here, guys, uh, Star Wars Shatterpoint gameplay. Uh, this is going to be the third instalment in their Star Wars Shatterpoint series. Uh, we've looked at the all important aspects of building the strike team, the missions, and now they're getting into a little bit of gameplay. So starting out, Quinn, we're going to see how um, or what range tools we're using. So there are five range tools uh, for measuring things like abilities and attacks. Um, I think, Quinn, looking at the uh, top four of those tools there on the right-hand side, um, two, three, four, and five, I would be very surprised if they weren't the same size tools that we get from Atomic Mass Games uh, with Marvel Crisis Protocol. They look and feel like they're, they're about the same, don't they? I think the range rulers, uh, based on the map layout that we've seen, are definitely the same, like with the fours and the fives being eights and tens, respectively. And the movement tools are very interesting, though, because I don't know where exactly they lie. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I I think they could be just short and medium. They could be, but... See, I think the small one could very well be a short... But there's something about that other one that makes me feel maybe it's like between a medium and a long. Somewhere in between. Yeah. yeah, well we'll get we'll get into the we'll get into the movement tools because it is interesting. Um but as we mentioned, we got the four of or five range, normal range tools. So as they do with Marvel Crisis Protocol, um I suppose technically six range tools, because what you can also do is use uh the side of any of those tools. Um to basically be a, a range one ability. Uh, and then we've got this thing, Quinn, called... They're calling it the shove tool, um, yeah. which we thought was going to be a climbing tool, didn't we? We thought it was going to be something to do with moving up ladders and things. But, I mean, shove to me feels like it's going to be for some sort of force abilities, force pushes type yeah, things. Yeah, or just or... even like close combat, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I really yes. hope that the way that you utilize this tool is actually you just throw it at the enemy model being shoved, and however far <laughs> they go is how far they get. However far he goes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and if they I'm break off the sure. base, they instantly die. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not not quite that, sure. I think that wouldn't enrage anyone and would be completely reasonable. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so let's then get into the movement tools, Quinn. So as we say, they're calling them um, long and short. And what they're saying is that a long movement tool is used when a character makes an advance. And we'll, a little bit further down, we'll get into some of the different actions that they can take. Um, whilst the short movement tool is used for a number of different movements like dashing, jumping, climbing. So climbing is what the, the short movement tool is going to be in. And then the use of these tools means that measuring anything in the game is fast and easy. And I will say that, rather than getting out a tape measure, right, we, you know, we've both played MESBG as well, um, plus, you know, other games that, that don't have their own range, range tools. And it is. It's just so much easier. It's so much quicker. It's, it's just, you know, I've got my tools here um, and 
I just think it's so much easier than getting out a tape measure and having to measure out. And I, I also and find else. it a lot easier to trust my opponent's movements with measuring tools because, like, yeah. some people just either don't know how to use a tape measure or are cheating. That's just well, the thing. Yeah, and I think especially when you're doing front to back movement, yeah, uh, which you know, again, Quinn, although, although only one side only one side of those movement tools look, yeah. are nooked which is interesting i imagine um, that is to just remove the little bit of finagling mcp has with regard to like standing on the very edge got a because, extra slight little tip yeah, yeah. Here which, which can, can be do. the difference of getting in range or not but like there are some people that just don't know that's a thing you can do right yeah absolutely absolutely but i, I think it is really interesting uh it, it feels like ranged um so it's saying things like abilities and attacks. So I gather abilities could still be what we refer to as places in Marvel Crisis Protocol. Maybe. So what we mean by a place rather than a an advance or a move is we basically use the range tools to move our character. And it's usually Quinn for things like teleports, leaps, jumps, that sort of thing, isn't it? Rather yeah. than um, pushes, advances climbs that sort of thing where we use the the actual movement tools so yeah um, i mean i think an example of it being used in an ability will be rex's card you know we sort yes. of get a move on soldier that icon in there seems to be the icon that is on this short tool in the center like that yes, sort of does. arrow where the line has a few like cut sections in it like the broken out yeah like the broken yeah, arrow whereas the one the, the long move is like just the fully intact arrow right yeah so yeah. just Go on. Go, go on, sorry, finish, finish off. No, I sorry. was just going to say, like, so it'll be things like that, I imagine, where we see the, this kind of tool being used. Yeah, just looking at the artwork on these tools as well, because it is quite interesting. It looks like we've got um, lightsabers on the range too, sort of the crossed over lightsabers. Yeah, yeah. Um, looks like we've got some sort of, like, blaster pistol on range um, on the range five one, I got real I confused then because I thought you were talking about three, and it was like, oh. no, 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 no. I was dropping down, but I, I can't. Is that force lightning on four? Do you think four seems to be force lightning? Three seems yeah. to be thermal detonators. Thermal detonators, yeah. And then it looks like a landscape on the movement tools. Yeah. So the short tool has R two D two on it. Oh, it does. Yeah. So oh, that's good because it also it's got the twin sons of Tatooine. It does, yeah. Just on the on the left hand side yeah. there, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, let's talk about this push tool, Quinn. A shove shove tool. Shove feels like such a rudimentary word when we're talking about. Do, do you not agree though? Like it doesn't like oh, I just shove your character. It doesn't fit. <laughs> shove off, you git. No, like I don't know it. it like, it feels like a more specific word than push as well, right? It's a lot more aggressive. It's a lot more just sort of, uh, you know, like sort of more it, of a, yeah. It, it's also very interesting that... It's a weird and, shape. It's Yeah, because it, it, it looks like from the, from its, long, its longest point, looks like it's the same length well, we as know a range five length. tool. But, oh, right, I, I thought you were talking about the ends because we know the ends are range one from the article. No, no, no. I meant as in the I actual, in the actual, well, the yeah, actual yeah. length of it. Yeah, the actual length of it. It, it seems it's, pretty close, yeah. But then we've got these little... You've, you've got the arrow, right? So you've got the arrow that points... Yeah, I, I don't know what the arrow away means. Away from it. Maybe the, the arrow is little... like another symbol like we've seen on the movement tools. Yeah, and then we've got a little... Like these... What, the one... Two, three, like four nooks up from that. I, I feel like those are just set decoration more than anything. I don't think those are going to have like an actual gameplay use just because I don't understand how they would slot into anything. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 an interesting one. And then the, the tool's almost broken down into two. Yeah. Like, but the, but you, know what it's the, the, you know what it looks like? Go on. It looks like a Stanley Blade. Do you know, it looks like a yeah, it does look like a yeah. Stanley knife, doesn't it? It does look like a Stanley knife. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how that works, what on earth it does. Um, 
I'm hoping that we get some because I don't like painting my range tools because mm. I just don't like painting them. So Cogger Two, if you're listening, friend of the channel, they sponsored us before uh, when we've done um, giveaways and things. Um, let's get on these, shall we, and get something out pretty soon because uh, I like I'd love me some nice, uh, Ooh, you know. Right, here's the question. Thrawn. Thrawn, okay. Yeah, right. some nice Thrawn ones. But let's say you get two tool sets. One prequel era, one Galactic Civil War era. Who are you picking? Obviously, Galactic Civil War, you're picking Thrawn, right? I'm picking Thrawn, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. What about prequel era? Who are you picking uh, prequel? Do you know what? Prequel era. See, Ooh. I'm torn. It would Go either on. be a Darth Maul set. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I say Darth Maul set, you know, it would be, you know, maybe some of the Super Commandos thing, but that sort of thing, right? Or like like a Jedi set where it was different Jedi were on oh, each okay. of them. So you have like uh, your short tool is like a Yoda themed one and you have like a Mace Lindu. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like a Jedi Council one. Exactly that, yeah. Not not yeah. Jedi Masters, because then you wouldn't have Anakin on there, but No, no. What about you? What would you pick? See, I could imagine some very, very nice looking mall rule like range rulers. Where yeah. like the actual design on the range rulers is like sort of the top of his head, like with the tattoo designs of the horns and stuff. I think that'd be really cool. Otherwise I really like Pre Vizsla. I really like Pre Vizsla yeah, character. Good show. I think his design is really cool. Um Galactic Civil War. You know who'd look you know who would have really good tools? Go on. Sabine Wren. Sabine would have really good tools, yes, with Hers all the graffiti and things. Yeah, yeah I, I, I concur. It's going to be really interesting to see how important the shape and nooks and things on yeah. that shove tool are. Um, because that... also it's on like a weird diagonal in the middle as well, and it's just... It, it's really strange, really strange. Um, but anyway, we'll we, you know we'll hopefully see we'll hopefully see some more. Um, let's scroll down a little bit, Quinn. Uh, let's talk about dice. Um, so as we already you know kind of knew, two sets of dice in the game. We've got attack dice that are going to be eight sided, and then defense dice which are six sided. Um, and with only dice, three different faces, right? With only three different faces on, yeah, we've seen them all. Um, so interesting. Uh, kind of already knew that anyway. Um, looking at the eight sided die, they do look different to Legion and MCP than anything else we've got. So it looks like they are unique dice again um but yeah i mean you know it's nice to get it confirmed um what i do want to talk about quinn is the next couple of uh sentences down because these are the bits that i think have got a couple of people on the old internet and it's it's unlike anyone on the internet to get a bit riled isn't it by no, anything the, the not, internet is very placid you know so i mean normally place. it's a very placid place people don't really you know air their dirty laundry or feelings or anything like that and yeah. if they do have bad thoughts they just keep them to themselves because that's the um, responsible <laughs> thing to do isn't it rage so let's talk about a bit more about gameplay quinn so it says here in most tabletop miniatures games, gameplay is divided into a certain number of rounds, with each round typically being broken down into phases or turns that dictate how players activate their miniatures and resolve the actions in the game. Um, Shatterpoint breaks from this standard format by removing the concept of rounds. So we already alluded to this last week when we were breaking it down, Quinn. And sort of said, look, we think rounds may not even be a thing in this game. Um, and by the way, guys, we have no prior knowledge of this. Uh, we don't get anything in advance. Um, so I, th I think. Oh, I right. Think... We're not talking about that stuff. Okay. Yeah, no, we're talking about that. So, yeah, it was, it was interesting that we were on the money with that one. Um, so rounds. Yes, we, we had no idea what we were talking <laughs> about. Uh -huh. So rounds have been taken out, or, or rounds don't exist in the game, which I think, Quinn. Makes sense, right? We know with, with that... the way scoring in Shadow yeah, we... works, and you've got the whole back and forth tug of war. It you you don't need it, right? Because in MCP, your round is for you know resetting all the people that can activate, flipping over people that are dazed, 
and then it's just you know you score points and stuff right yeah. you're not scoring points and people are flipping in like you know maybe a different way or aren't flipping at all in shot point probably don't need it right well and also let's be honest right um it's 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 less i don't know none of this is realistic because it's ultimately plastic toy soldiers based on made up universe, right? So none of it's real, but oh, well, it made does... up galaxy, made up made galaxy. up galaxy, yeah, far, far away, a long, a long time ago, Quinn as well, quite far away. I think that's the term, quite far away, is what George said. <laughs> um, but a fair bit, I mean, fair bit away, probably yeah, a about few half days, but ba- few days back, quite a bit away. Um, but it makes sense to me, right? Why, why would, why would they in the middle of any any sort of battle, any sort of melee? Um, like stop in the middle and go right, guys. Where we at? Okay. Um, right. You 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 can you can do that now and take that off there. And oh, you scored two points there, Previsla. Well done. Um, it's yeah, like no, like, it <laughs> but it's like it it they, they don't wait. Like okay, I've got I've now got the advantage. Actually, no, bang! I'm coming back at you, and I've got the advantage. It, it's unlike any game I've ever seen before, Quinn. It's definitely unlike any game I've played. Um. I liken this to more like a real-time strategy PC game where there is no cleanup phase. There is no stopping. It's like, okay, you go, I go, you go, I go, you go, I go. And we'll talk a little bit about how that works as well. Uh-huh. Cause, oh, but yes. In all fairness, in like RTS, you typically have sort of lulls in the action, right? Where like you're no longer in that engagement, you're building up your base again, all that sort of stuff. So like, I, I kind of get the concept of rounds... Um, they are like a clean way to do things, but I do like the whole tug of war mechanic Shatterpoint has going on. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. Yeah, no, indeed, indeed. Um, so we won't go through all the things, but during a player's turn, so we do know that we're going to have turns, um, they get the chance to activate one of their units. Excuse me. When a unit activates, it can make up to two actions. Boo! Oh. I know, right? Um, however, Quinn... It doesn't say anything um, around can they do the same action multiple times. So again, (laughs) I think they're going to be able to. But if you look at Legion, which is the other Star Wars game, uh, you know, albeit not developed by AMG in any way, shape, or form. The the core rules not developed by them. There's obviously a release rule since, but um, so you've got moves where each character in the unit may advance, dash, or climb. And important there, so a unit, as we spoke about last week, is the card. Is the card, and then characters are within a unit. Within a unit. But a single unit can be made up of multiple models as well. Just to really confuse... (laughs) Go on. What, what, What the hell's a dash? Well, if you remember... We scroll back up. They talked about the short movement being used as a dash. I think a dash is going to be something a little bit more. So I think you 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 get to make a full move, and that'll be one of your moves. A climb, which we know is going to be using the short tool, and a dash might be you do you only get to make a shorter move. But you get something extra as Maybe part of it. Maybe you gain like some sort of token or something. Yeah, yeah, that could work. So, in you know, I think because they've distinguished between the two, I think you know, I think that could be it. Um, focus. So the next attack made by each character in the unit, this activation adds one die to its attack roll. Mm. And I just want to pick something up here, Quinn, as well. Um, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to essentially do four different things with support units. And and that's presuming that all support units are two characters right now, which we don't know if they are. But I don't think you're going to have the option. I think you move and each character moves. Yeah. If you do combat, each character does combat. Interestingly, that then to me, on focus, suggests that you are rolling separate attacks for each character in the unit. I think you are, 100%. So, well, you know, you can maybe have one of your five or first guys shoot at a B1 over there, and the other guy shoot at, like, Kalani over there, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, I, I, I would, I, I absolutely think that's the case. Um, 
I, you know, I don't think there's going to be anything that says they need to be together. Um, I think I think they're going to be able to be, you know, deploy them on separate sides of the board. And whilst they'll move up as independent units, they're sharing an action. So they both have to move. They both have to fire. What you can't do is move one, move the other one, shoot with one, move the other one and move them into range. At least that's how I'm reading these rules mm. at the moment. I don't know if you've got a different take on them, Quinn, or if you... If you're in agreement there. No, I feel like that makes more sense that they are doing the same thing. I mean, we still don't know if there's any form of like unit coherency or anything like that. I think that'll be really interesting to find out. I think we do to some extent from a keyword perspective, don't we? Um, uh, do we? Well, we know that um, you know we know that people like Rex have got commands that they can give to oh, only no, certain. What did you interpret me saying unit coherency as? I meant that, like, you have a commander that can right. command that, that's X. That's not what I meant. So unit currency is a thing from other games like 40k, things like that, where when you have units that are a bunch of models in there, they all have to stay within a certain distance of each other. Oh! So I mean more... Am I cohesion. Co cohesion, coherency, yeah. they are the Sorry. same. They are literally the same thing. I know, but I didn't pick up on it because yeah. I've always referred to it as cohesion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like um, that kind um, of thing, because then am I sending like a fiber first down this way, fiber first down that way? Or is it going to be like, are they going to no, go together I, as a group? I don't think so. It's obviously in Star Wars Legion, you have the same, right? Where you move you move your yeah. leader up and then everyone else can move up and has to be within X amount of you know range from your leader, right? Um, you don't have to measure each individual character. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think each... They're going to be independent, but sharing actions. I feel is how it's going to okay. how it's going to be. Uh, at least that that was my take on it. Um, so focus, as we mentioned, the next attack made by each character in the unit. This activation adds one die to its attack roll. Um, yeah, I find it's that gonna be... curious because, like, how valuable is a single die going to be? Right. Well, that's the thing, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, unless these are also some keywords, okay, that um, we get in there. So, like, you know, as we have in uh, in Star Wars Legion, as we have in Marvel Crisis Protocol, action economy becomes a really big thing. So things like uh, hit and run, uh, things like charge, where they're, you're combining two actions into a single action, maybe that's where focus becomes a little bit more prevalent. Uh, yeah. But who knows? One die may be huge. You know, one. They, they, might, they might only be rolling. You know, if Anakin's only rolling three attack die for his lightsaber, one die is actually quite a big increase. Um, it could also we'll be to... like you know, it's a way to boost up an attack against something that has like higher defensive capabilities against multiple attacks. Sort of like characters in MCP that have invulnerable type abilities where they reduce damage. Yeah, yeah, you maybe. might be better off doing one instance of higher damage than two instances of lower damage, right? Because yeah. you're only getting the reduction on the one. Yeah, the next one's really interesting, Quinn. They're referring to it as combat. Each Ooh. character in the unit may make an attack. Um, doesn't say melee attack. It doesn't say ranged attack. It yeah. just says attack, which to me means that they're, they're going to have to have attacks printed on their cards. And it was the one thing we said seemed to be missing. So there I must be... still very much think it's stance cards. Yeah, is that where, is that where you're, yeah. you're leaning into? Yeah, and I feel like it's probably the most likely place for them now. Um, cool. And maybe that you say, maybe they've got a couple of options. You'd expect that each... You'd expect that the support characters carrying guns would have... You know, one ranged attack and one melee attack, with the ranged attack being, you know, more potent than the, uh, sorry, the, the range being more potent than the melee yeah. for the support characters, but then also. I, I've just done the support character. Go on. Right. So, you remember Revenge of the Sith? I do. You remember when the clones come in on Utapau to, like, flush out the last Inceptus? Yes. You remember that clone in the background? <laughs> who just decks a droid? Oh, yeah. I want him. I want that guy. He was cool. Um, 
<clears throat> so we still don't know what combat's going to be, but we know that it's going to be an action. Whereas, obviously, in Marvel, I suppose in MCP it kind of is, but we it, they just refer to it as an as an attack, don't they? Um, but it's interesting. I think we're we're going to get range. We're going to get you know different ranged attacks. I... Yeah, I, th I think this also like compounds on your notion that like characters in a unit will be doing the same action because this says yeah. each character each makes character an attack, in right? the unit yeah yeah and then you know on move each character in the unit yeah, may yeah. advance dash or climb interesting though is that may advance dash or climb if maybe, one advances like, you know one of can the other one climb the other one climbs yeah yeah so maybe that's the thing um I I am. As we get closer to this game and we're now seeing things like combat and we're now seeing things like range one, range two, range three, four, so on and so forth, I'm getting a little bit more concerned oh dear. about lightsaber combat in this game. Right. And the fact that it is going to be, I am a lightsaber user, I have an attack with a lightsaber, I do my attack with lightsaber, you do defense dice, my turn ends. And it's the one thing I really wanted them to do more as a melee. Caveat. Okay. So, these stance cards that I believe are where characters' attacks lie. Yep. I have a strong suspicion that they are double-sided. Right? Okay. Now, for most and one's units, defense, one's offense. Well, no. More the, you know, uh, for most units, you'll have your ranged attack on one side uh, okay. and your melee on the other side. Now, obviously, lightsaber users don't really have ranged attacks. I know they can yeet their lightsaber at people, but, like, if you see that a handful of times, it's not something that's uber common. It's No, it's not a big thing. So what if... Like, saber users have two sides, one which is their more general purpose lightsaber combat side, where, you know, it's for deflecting, it's for, you know, running up and just, you know, cutting battle droids in half, stabbing clones, that kind of thing. And then the other side is their dueling side. And that then represents more of sort of the lightsaber form they practice, and that's how you then marry up that idea of like yeah. saber battles. That could, could be work. a thing. Could absolutely work. Um, I just it, it it's it's the one it, it's one of the big questions for me that is yet to be answered. Hmm. And when I see the range tools, I'm just like, oh, please, for God's sake, please don't have lightsaber battles that are happening at range two apart. Like, I want well, them to. I, come... I think that's fine. I want them to be base to base and I want them to I want I want them to be within within Shatterpoint, within a phase, within whatever else. I want it almost to be a thing that can happen, you know, that go you know, goes on over a couple of turns and has its own little back and forth and things. See, you, with... you want to get into like you wanna get past the first like ten seconds of Duel of the Fates, right? You want to go beyond. Da, 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 yeah. da, da, da. You want to go. Da, da, I want the full. Da, da, I want the job lot. You, you yeah, want all I want of the that, job lot. Right. Um, and who knows? Look, I mean, is is it enough that if it isn't like that, it's going to make me very disappointed in the game? Probably not. I just think, I just think we've never seen good lightsaber battles in a tabletop game before. At I mean, least it's not, the I mean, reason not... I never picked up Legion, because lightsabers seemed awful. Yeah. Right. I mean, lightsabers are very good in Legion. Well, um, they probably are very but... good, but they're boring as hell. And and, and we'll get on to there's, there's a bit of other things around it, but I think maybe the other things around it make make it even more important for me that they get that right. But we'll carry on through. Um, ability. So the unit may use an ability that requires the use of an action. Seen that before in... In, in Marvel Crisis Protocol, you've also seen it in Star Wars Legion as well, where it's something that you do that's not one of these things listed. It basically just gives them more flexibility because what they don't want to do is list every single um, things that anyone could ever do. These are just the standard things that everyone can do, uh, unless, I imagine, otherwise stated on their card. Um, so ability just opens that up. 
Interesting, Quinn. Recover. Yeah. Each character in the unit may heal. When a character heals, it may remove one condition or one damage from itself or another allied character within range two of it. Really opens up this idea of other support characters like the super battle droids. Uh, sorry, um, like, uh, like the super tactical droids and other types of characters who maybe are less prevalent in combat, but I sort of sat at the back pulling the strings, bit of healing there, bit of healing there. I think that's quite interesting. I have a question. Right. 501st Troopers, yeah? Yeah. If I paint one up as kicks, can I recover two instead? Because he's a medic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ah, cool. um, <laughs> uh, and then lastly, we have Take Cover. Each character in the unit is pushed and gains a hunter token. Which hunker. improves hunker, hunker token, hunter. sorry, which improves its defense against ranged attacks. I think Quinn, a hunker token is the token that Rex gives out. Yeah, I'm fairly certain. Interesting use of the word pushed. Is it going to be MCP style where like maybe your opponent resolves this because you are literally like just running and ducking for cover and they're just fanning out, or I... is it going to be more of a you know? I'm going to hide behind this building. That kind of thing. I think I think a push is to distinguish uh, first of all to distinguish between using the long tool and the short tool, and then to so distinguish again, that you can't climb or maybe change elevation. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Mm. Still interested about a dash. I'm still quite interested in a dash, yeah. but um, you know, maybe a dash is maybe a dash is a is a little short move with an attack, but only. Half your combat dice, or something. I don't know, something like that. It could, it like could, a pop it feels shot. like yeah, it could be and covering fire. Yeah. So, then in addition to its standard actions, uh, many characters have unique abilities uh, that they can use during play. We will take a closer look at these abilities and how they function in a future article. Mm. Um, interesting, Quinn. Uh, I mean, there's nothing yeah. there that surprises me too much. The, the I, I, I find does. recover very interesting. Yeah, the recover one's probably because the one that does. You can recover you can recover for allied characters within two of you. Does that mean that, you know, we're eventually gonna get a medical droid support who heals two on recovers instead and just goes around and goes like like um whatever Grievous's little assistant was called in his um oh, you know his big remember. lair. Like Beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop. That was his name, beep, right? Beep, 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 boop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, have I that guy just follow Grievous around, just, like, give him new parts and, like, fix him up and just have that be his role. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah. I think it's really good. I think it's... Um, again, we don't know, right? How important is, you know, what conditions are there? Right? We, we, we don't know. Um, how important is one damage? If it's a health pool of 20 and people are only rolling two dice... Probably not a lot. If it's a health pool of five and people are rolling 20 dice, it's probably irrelevant. Um, <laughs> like, we just don't know at the moment, but... Um, well, we have a rough idea with health pools, right? We know uh, that Rex is nine and we know that another character we're about to get to is probably well, ten or more. We don't actually know that that is health yet, do we? That's the thing. We, we, I'm, I'm fairly we strongly, health. strongly suspect that it I'd is. Be, I'd be um, shocked if it wasn't. Yeah. Um, Quinn, let's talk about unit activation because this is one of the things that I have seen people get very, very upset about uh, with, with Atomic Mass games. See, I and love I, this. And I love it. <laughs> Um, so unit activation works quite differently from any atomic mass games, uh, atomic mass games or the games, and is purposefully designed once again to help create the experience of high tension and somewhat tumultuous action of the best Saturday morning animated stories. I'm going to say here, Quinn, I don't think what they have done is a million miles away from Legion with the order tokens. Right? Yes, your command cards let you pick some out that you want, but they've got something in the game here kind of lets you do that a little bit um so i don't think it's a million miles away but essentially what you have quinn are these um unit order cards and each character in your um 
each character in your uh, squads and in your uh, strike forces, uh, strike teams, strike teams, team. strike force, yeah. I know. strike team. Oh, strike team force, strike force team strike. Um, anyway, um, so each team of your strike strike, <laughs> uh, each of your eight units. Okay, because we know it's eight units because it's two. Whoa, 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 two. whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, sorry, no, each of your six units. There we I go. I apologize. There we yeah. go. Because I was thinking of two yeah, things. Yeah, so yeah. I, I know what you were thinking, but what you each... were thinking was wrong. <laughs> it was very wrong, yeah. Um, so each unit has its own order card. At the start of the game, each player will shuffle their order cards, so six unit order cards together, along with a, I believe, what is going to be a single special Shatterpoint card. Um, so you shuffle them. I gather, turn them face up, I assume that this is just the artwork on the card so you know who it is. And on the other side, there'll be just the same looking cards, you know, with some artwork on the back. Um, and basically... Uh, you... I don't think that is how that's going to work. Do you not think? Surely they're going to have something generic on the back so you don't know who's coming next. No, that's what I mean. Sorry, I, just, I meant generic artwork on the back of the cards, right? Oh, right. Sorry, I thought you just, when when you said more artwork, I was just like, what? Yeah, no, no. I just meant like from? more, more generic artwork on the back, like Star yeah. Wars Shatterpoint or whatever. I um, mean, we're probably going to use sleeves. Let's be honest, but yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, and then basically, um, although you say sleeves, Quinn, these cards, they're they're weird. They're weird dimensions, look aren't they? Like standard card size. Um, but anyway, that's that's by the back. unless they're the tiny cards. Oh, but even then, even then they're still wrong. Even then they're still a bit off, aren't they? Um, yeah. But either way, you get these cards, <clears throat> and basically you pick the top card, and that's the unit that you're going to activate. Um, you don't get to choose. However, well... however, there is uh, there is a, a, a little um, sort of thing in play there, Quinn, isn't there? Um, because each player has the option to place a just drawn card in reserve, but it's going to cost you. So if you want to make sure that you're activating Anakin last or whoever it is last, um, it's going to cost you to do it and you can only ever have one card in reserve at any one time. Um, but you can choose to pull from that card whenever you want. And then in addition, you've got the Shatterpoint card, mm -hmm. which basically lets you pick whatever you want to do to, to activate. Even it's, someone it's that has already gone. Even somebody that has already gone. So it may be that you pull your Shatterpoint card first. Yeah. Very annoying. So uh, you pay... See, I don't know if that is going to be annoying, because I imagine when you draw that that unit's card afterwards, you can probably still just go with them. Oh, do you think it's just an extra I, I one completely? I think it's you get an extra one completely, yeah. Oh, interesting. I was thinking more of you put that into reserve and then it's there and then you can double no, activate. Like, but... I mean, that could be a thing that you do, like, totally, to, like, have that yeah. banked later in the round. But I think if you, for instance, drew the Shatterpoint card and were like, oh, I'm going to activate Gar Saxon with it, and then the next card you drew was Gar Saxon... I think you would still go again with Gar Saxon, right? Because otherwise uh, it becomes a dead okay. draw, and I think that yeah, makes yeah, yeah. Things. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. I think that yeah, I think I think you're probably right there. Um, what is really interesting in, with this as well, Quinn? So at the end of a player's turn, if they have no order cards left in their order deck or reserve, they refresh the deck. Basically, put them all together. Any anyone that's been defeated. So we're using the term defeated now for units Instead that have come of off the wounded, board. Instead of wounded, so we've got two different. Yeah. Now, we might be reading into that too much, Quinn. But I, I have a feeling that the ECG symbol. Now we know everyone's doing two actions. Is the number of times you can be wounded. Yeah. And then once you have been wound, wounded, that number of times you are defeated. Defeated. Yeah. It feels like that's probably it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um But what. I really like about this is um, it doesn't matter if you it, we've both got let's say we've both got f six units on the table right uh -huh. uh, which which will which will have could be any number of characters right but six units yeah um, 
because of that mechanic of, okay, I've, I'm out of activations. That doesn't happen in this game. In no. MCP, in Legion, um, if I've done my characters, because we have rounds, you then get to do back-to-back-to-back activations or back-to-back-to-back turns. Whereas that doesn't happen in this game. Actually, losing... If you take out my 501st Troopers... That suddenly that means you're getting to activate Anakin a lot more frequently, I'm getting right? to activate Anakin... Yeah. X percent, twenty five percent, thirty three percent more often. I think fifty percent, maybe even. I can't. Remember. I'd have to do the math on it, but but more often compared to when you get to activate your powerful characters, and so that's maybe really that's interesting. Like where the strength of the separatist lies, because the B ones are probably going to be awful because they're. You imagine they're the worst units in the game. So, it is the strategy just although there are the three board. of them. Throw them up the board, get a couple points for them, wait for them to die, and go, cool, I'm going to activate Dooku, like, however many times more often. Well, <clears throat> I also think that the counter to that is then you only have now, you know, five units on the board, yeah. making it that much harder for you to You've score. You've lost, you know, um, however many percent of your moderns, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I I, it, I find it really interesting. Uh, I think it's a again a very very interesting mechanic, um, and I'm, yeah, I, I'm 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 down for it. That, there are two very interesting things to pick up on on this sort of suite of cards we've been shown, right? Yeah, let's just go so, back to these unit order cards because these are quite cool. No, number one, what is that symbol on Gar Saxon? Right, we have seen that symbol before. Uh, is it in? Is it on the tokens? No, it is the symbol that is on Rex's ability. Oh, it is. Yeah. So, is that potentially just a reminder that you have a start of activation ability on that character? Because Rex's thing is at the start of your activation, do the thing. Do yeah, the do the thing. It. Is Gar Saxon going to have a similar sort of ability? Is the question. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, I'd not really. Thought he's also that. the only secondary pictured here. He is the only secondary. So, you know. Um. May- maybe a and thing. So far, all sec all secondaries that we've seen um have something like that. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. It'll be a thing. See, I mean, it could also denote what version of a character you're using, because I have a sneaking suspicion that there will be characters in this game. That can be used as either a primary or a secondary. Um, I think they'll have different cards, but I think you will be able to use that miniature for them. And I'll get okay. onto that a little bit later. So, do you think Gar like, Saxon could be a leader as well? Yeah, maybe he's a leader and he gets like, I don't know, Rook Cast to work for him, something like that. Yeah, it's And he's like, oh, look at yeah. me. I, I'm a bit of an arsehole Mandalorian man. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, it's interesting. The, but, the um... other interesting thing is your boy in the bottom right-hand corner of that Shatterpoint card. Uh, Bottom right-hand corner? Uh-huh. That's Vader, is it? it, it is it? Fuck. I, no. I, can't, I, can, I can't see you from can't where, where I'm looking. Is. Like, the little sort of pane of... Oh, it's Hondo. It, it's Hondo, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'd not, I'd not looked at it yeah. more carefully. Oh. Everyone's favourite pirate. I mean, yeah. Just saying, uh, Hondo confirmed, guys. Hondo confirmed. Very, very interesting that they would have him. Because everyone that else artwork. is like Corset or First Wave, right? Because you've got Obi Wan, Dooku, uh, Obi Wan, Bokatan. Yeah. And then. And, and then just Hondo chilling there. Rebels confirmed. Chopper confirmed. Highest no, kill count. No. Highest kill count. If we're getting Hondo, we're getting prequel era Hondo, not whatever the hell Rebel Hondo was. <laughs> um. So, I think the last thing that's in here as well, Quinn, um, is talking about Will of the Force. So, what is Will of the Force? Uh, did uh, we fully do, like, the reserve thing? We did, right? We did, yeah, yeah. We yeah, went through the reserve thing. We so don't know sure. what the reserves cost yet. I Again, mean, this is well, back to my thing we're, of... We're, we're about to find out. Do you think that's what it is? Well, yeah, because they say it is. Or do they actually say it's yeah. the it's the thing? Yeah, okay. Um, so 
rounding out part one of our gameplay review, we need to talk about the force and how it is present. How, on, sorry, and how its presence is represented in games of Shatterpoint. Um, the force is a powerful ally, and through only certain individuals trained in its use can tap into its full potential. <clears throat> the present, the presence of the force still has a powerful influence on characters and the world around them. Um, so basically, at the start of the game. Players determine the will of the force by adding force tokens to their force pool equal to the combined total of all force stats on their strike team's unit stat cards. So guys, this symbol that we were thinking about, I mean, we, we, we kind of knew it was something to do with the force, but yeah. I think we were thrown a little bit by the fact that Ahsoka Tano Padawan didn't have any. Yeah. Um, however, they do say here, typically, so not always, but typically, only primary units have a force stat. So most often, a strikes team force pool will be equal to the combined force stat of its two primary units. That's not saying that a secondary won't in the future. And what it's not saying is that a secondary character, or indeed a support character, can't use will uh, can't use the will of the force and can't use a force point they may have things on their card that allow them to use yeah. it but they're not contributing to the force pool for that particular strike team or or um uh, or, or, or squad and i and i think it's going to be a combined pool isn't it that can be used across yeah across, across the entire thing yeah yeah um again i think this is a really interesting resource i think yeah. I think a lot of the Jedi are going to have meditate on here as an Ooh. ability that they can do and replenish. You know, you imagine a Yoda or a, a, a Qui Gon or an Obi Wan. Uh, you know, less so Anakin. <laughs> what you, you um, mean, angry hormonal <laughs> like man Anakin Skywalker? Yeah, isn't going to sit down and meditate. Especially not on Tatooine either. Um, it just well, yeah, hits it and it gets you know, and it gets well, everywhere. Of course, and it gets everywhere. <laughs> um, so I can see this as being something that is is something that you have the ability to replenish. But what I love is that you have this finite Ooh, or potentially yeah. finite resource on top of health, on top of anything else um, that you really need to choose. You know, I think they talk a little bit further down, don't they? About you know. Do you use it early and get a lead, or do you wait and use it to press an advantage later on in the game? I think it's I think it's really really interesting. Yeah, I, I think um, like when it comes to games and sort of their complexity, the more resources, the better, right? Because it's just more things for you to manage, more things to keep track of in terms of what your opponent's doing. You know, <sighs> it. You know, if one person is like sort of ignoring the force mechanic for a while and then they're not paying attention, and suddenly you manage to pull off this big thing using the Force, that can suddenly turn the game on its head, right? Yeah. And I, I like the idea of this sort of thing. No, 100%. 100%. Um, we get a little look at Anakin Skywalker's card here. Mm. Um, let's zoom out ever so slightly, just so we can see it in all of its glory on the screen there. There we go. Um, so, unsurprisingly, Quinn... Obviously, you know, he's a primary unit. I think we, we, we kind of already knew that was the case. Um, and unsurprisingly, again, he is General Anakin Skywalker. And once again, he's got the... Um, they, don't, they didn't call it an alias, did they? Um, no, but it's he's got like the, a, a keyword, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. But just Anakin Skywalker, basically, is Which, his name. I, I wonder why that would be there. Yeah. Hmm, you start thing. doing the thing they do in Clone Wars, where like they yeah. play the Imperial March really subtly. Yeah. I always enjoy yes. when they do that, because I'm re-watching Clone Wars at the minute, and I've just got to the um, the one where that guy tries to kidnap Satine. And they're like, ah, oh, but I've already won, because who of you will strike me down? this <clears throat> Or you? Who will be held as a hero by everyone but Satine? And then you just get stabbed in the back by Anakin. You're just like, what? He was going to blow up the ship. Yeah. Well, and you know, and we have to act surprised. Basically, is the thing, oh yeah, of course. It? Like, oh, um, how could he do something so evil? So a nice little look at uh, his card there, but we do also get a little look, Quinn, 
at the other side of his card. Yeah. And we do see, uh, we do see here, Force Jump is one of his abilities. Now, interestingly, um, I think it looks like Anakin's little heartbeat thing is a three. I think it's three as well. And I want to say 12, but I'm not entirely sure the, for the for the health. The point. only thing I'm entirely sure of is that it isn't 11, because I don't think those two numbers are the same. I would agree. I, I think it's 10. Okay, I, I, I just don't think that second number looks... I, I think it could be a zero, but equally okay. you are free to disagree. It's, it's, it's definitely well, actually, double digits. The more I look at it, the more it looks like a three. Maybe 13, 13 seems like a very unusual number. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. That's like that. Nobody should ever have thirteen of anything, um, or eleven. Um, so you know, this is an example here of um, of, uh, of of one of the abilities that we spoke about. <clears throat> Interestingly, Quinn as well. It's also got that symbol, the force symbol. I imagine so we're that means you have pay, here, that you have to pay force points to do it, yeah. right? Now, if you look at the one underneath Quinn, again, that's blurred out, that has two symbols. So I'm yeah. assuming that that's going to require two of something. But Well, you know it, what that's going to be, right? It's going to be a charge of some sort, no. right? What do you think it's going to be? That, that's going to be when Anakin gets a bit pissed off and starts force choking people. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about that. It, 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 it's about gonna that. be, and I'm I'm gonna need to make like a soundboard on my phone for Shatterpoint. <laughs> where like whenever Anakin does something that's a little bit dodgy, just once again that very subtle Imperial March begins to play. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, look, um I think it's I think nothing nothing about this Quinn uh that I've seen so far doesn't add to my overall excitement. Um the one bit I really want to see is now lightsaber combat. I'm not even not not even lightsaber combat, but hand to hand combat um, is one thing that I do I do really want to see. I don't just want it to be a generic ability that you know a generic combat that somebody does and rolls defense fight dice for. I've got a sneaky feeling it's going to be that. Um, uh, once again, I'm sticking to my playbook idea for stances. I think you're going to be able to do a lot of stuff with these attack actions that ne won't necessarily come in the form of actually dealing damage. But we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I'd love there to be an ability of... I, I want it to be a duel. I want, I want it to be two people that are rolling off at the same time and you have to choose, right? What do I put into what? I've got a pool of X... And I choose what pulls that go, you know, what what goes into attack, what goes into defense, and then maybe something else. But I don't know. I think maybe I'm just uh, maybe I'm just asking too much. Uh, Quinn, overall, uh, I thought it was a pretty good article. Um, uh, it, it was all right. I feel I, like we learned more from the other <clears throat> two than we did this one. I think we did. I think we did. I think um, you know. Oh, we, we 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 can move. I mean that you know that didn't really come. Wow. We can move and we can attack. Well, there's a there's a shock. Um, but... I thought the Jedi Order were a bunch of pacifists and they didn't attack anyone. <laughs> so I don't understand why this game has attacks in it. I know why. Why does it even have it there? Um, but no, I think overall, uh, you know, again, I know it's not been everyone's cup of tea. Um, having this information drip fed. Um, I completely get why they are doing it. Um, they want to build up the excitement. Um, you know, the world in which we live in now is very different. This is one of the first big temple IPs to get a big game post COVID. Um, I, you know, I, I can't think of a bigger game since lockdown, um, that that has been released, um, or will have as much of an impact uh, on on the sort of tabletop wargaming scene. I, I don't know if you can think of any Quinn. I'm not. 
Hingham, hingham, hingham. Well, no, I just don't think there has been. Like, you know, there's been some expansions to a few things. and I can't think few... of any, like, games that have really come out in the past couple of years. Frosthaven was a big game, but again, it's not, you know, it's not a... It's I mean, not you a say game it's that... a big game. I don't think I've ever heard of it. It's a it's the a sequel to Gloomhaven. Um, oh, and right. It's a bloody big game. If it's a game. sequel, it doesn't count. Well, and also, it's not a game that's going to get tens, hundreds... Of people away for a weekend playing competitively against each other doesn't matter whether or not you think random activations is competitive or not this game will be played competitive oh yeah. it's 100 percent, 100 percent. i mean um, we, we know that for a fact because you've got ourselves like me and you interested yeah and absolutely we, we well, ruin everything not... we're involved in by being competitive 100%, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was one of the many thousands of people that killed Guild Ball, after all. Yeah. I thought David Cameron killed Guild Ball. No, see, he he was the guy who started the vote to kill Guild Ball. <laughs> and then, after we decided to kill Guild Ball, he you all jumped Guild in. Ball. Yeah. yeah um, nice, nice. Yeah, um, so, I mean, there is a bit more uh, uh, sort of information that came out today um, that I have just sent you if you want to read it. Okay, Queen. So, yeah, you just sent me this over. Uh, and interesting, because um, it confirms a couple of things. Um, so, this, I, it looks like it's on Facebook uh, and it looks like it's a response. So, this is from the you know official AMG admin and it states all primary units have a force value. So, Han Solo, General Grievous, etc. So, first of all, Han Solo confirmed. I mean, did we ever doubt? That Han Solo was going Who to be a character in this it? game. He's a boring character. <laughs> hey, I'm not scruffy. Uh, oh, um, so, sorry, Boomer. <laughs> I mean, also, I, I don't um, like Harrison Ford as an actor. I think he's not very so, good. Oh, he's a very good actor. Anyway, by the way. So, what we know is that whether they are a force user or not, they will bring a force value to the game. And I gather that number will be, you know, if, if Anakin is four. Couldn't really imagine Han being four as well, right? You'd imagine. Uh, I imagine there will be like two or three characters that are also four. Yeah, I, I, I like, think it'll be the big four shoes. I just think you'll get like Palpatine and Yoda, and like I don't even think Vader will be a four. Um, because I don't know. being very heavily cybernetic reduced his connection to the force, did it not? Yeah, I think maybe. I could imagine like Palpatine and Yoda being the fives, right? They're going to be the maybe. ones that are. I imagine I know, like, a four. And Anakin had like 50 billion midichlorians, though. We don't talk about the midichlorians, Queen, god damn it. <laughs> Why not? Um however, so so that and then so they will be able to uh contribute to the will of the force in the same way that Jedi Sith force users from the Star Wars Galaxy. As some have mentioned above, the force starting shatter point is not about being uh not about a being's ability to control the force, but about the force's influence and presence around that individual and the conflicts they find themselves in. So a nice little confirmation there that all primary characters will contribute, um, just some will contribute more than others. Um, and I imagine that that will be, you know, we, we one, thing, one thing we didn't uh, actually mention, Quinn, uh, let's just jump back to uh, Anakin's card a second. So we can see on, on Anakin's card here, one thing we didn't mention, Quinn, is that 7SP. So yep. we know that he's going to only bring seven squad points with him, whereas Ahsoka is bringing eight squad points. And I think Ahsoka was three four stat on her no, card, she, I want to say. Uh, three four stat. I, for a yeah. second, I thought you were talking about Padawan Ahsoka being a three card. No, 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 no. no. So yeah, yeah. Padawan, Padawan Ahsoka had zero four stat. Yep. Um, but obviously we've got four on there. So, you know, I think as well as how good an individual character is, I do think that force stat is also going to heavily contribute into the squad points, and yeah. in, you know, in terms of what they can what they can do with it, and you know, maybe maybe Yoda is only a three, but he gets to regenerate it, right? Maybe that's his unique thing that he gets. So it's a a smaller pool that he gets to gets to um, you know keep topping back up, but. I think also, interestingly, with Anakin's 7SP, we basically now have it confirmed what the costs of his, like, following units are. 
Because we know that Rex was going to be a four because Ahsoka's a four and she slots in perfectly for him, as they've said. So it's four and three. Now means yeah. that five are first of threes. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And, and I think what is... we're going to see, um, I think what we're going to see is a mirror there as well. So I think what we're going to see is that um, Darth Maul will be an eight. I think uh, Gar Saxon will be, sorry, uh, sorry, Darth Maul will be a three. Gar Saxon will what? be. Let me get that right. Darth Maul will be a seven. There we go. There we go. Third try. Third Gar try. Saxon uh, will be. I think Gar Saxon could be a three. I think, and he's then a three because I think he's an absolute shitfish. And I think the Mandalorian Super Commandos are going to be four. Yeah. So a bit of a reversal there. And then I think you're going to get um, eight four four with oh, the battle droids going to be eight four four. No. Well, we know they're not because we've seen. Oh, we know they're, they're three. three, don't we? So well, I think be... it's eight eight five three for Ventress, and I think Kalani is like some sort of insane support uh, secondary character. <clears throat> interesting, interesting. Um, there is one but... more thing I want to touch on from this comment from AMG. Okay. And it's Fire in the away. second. It's in the second line, Rich. Um. So it says, General Grievous, etc., can. Are primary units. The that slash is what concerns me, or intrigues me rather. Um, I think they've left out the word B after can. Okay. So Han Solo and General Grievous can be slash are primary units. Maybe. I Maybe, think yeah. the. When Han Solo inevitably comes out, you will have two Han Solo cards. A secondary Han Solo card and a primary Han Solo card. And I think that makes sense, right? Because you want to mix and match. Sometimes yeah. you want to take Han Solo with Chewie. Sometimes you want to take Leia, Le- Leia with, Han. with Han Solo there. Or Luke and Han. Or, you know, yeah. any combination. Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting. Um Again, like I say, I think I think um, very very intrigued about the game. Very excited to see to see what that combat looks like. That's going to be a big thing for the game, I think, in terms of what that combat looks like. But guys, we're not far away now. Uh, we're almost at Adepticon. Um, I think it's like three weeks away now, four weeks away. Um, where we Two or you know, three we're gonna, more articles. Yeah, we're going to start to see. Yeah, we're going to start to see. Uh, guys, remember, we are giving away, uh, and we're going to do it on the 4th or 5th of May, depending on when we get around to it. Um, we are giving away a car box. Um, so if you want to be with a chance to win that, you need to leave a like on this video, plus all of our other Shatterpoint videos as well. Uh, you need to leave a comment on this and any of the other Shatterpoint videos as well. Uh, the reason why is we're going to pick one of these build-up videos at random, um, including the greatest tier list that ever existed, uh, mm-hmm. that has ever existed. Sorry, I should say. I mean, um, I, I will just say to the audience now: maybe go leave a comment on that one and watch that one because I may or may not sway the pick of the video to be that it, one. It could very well end up being that <laughs> one, um, and there may be a question or something that we ask, and you need to tell us. You need to go watch it, um, and if you just want something on in the background while you're painting, you know, doing some hobby and. We had a great time building it and uh, making it. So, uh, but make sure that yeah. last. I mean, that you guy subscribe. who was like top comment really didn't enjoy it for some reason. He really didn't why. enjoy it, did he? Uh, I pinned him as well, I think. Um, so yeah, go check all those videos out. Uh, we're obviously going to be doing more um, Shatterpoint videos as these articles come through. Uh, we're not going to do immediate reaction things. We like to sit down read them, wait for things like the responses that come, because uh, then what we can do is collate all of that together uh, and dish the, and, and, and then push them out to you guys so you've got everything in a in a single place. But let us know down the bottom in the comment section. Uh, let us know what you're excited about. Do, you know, is this article getting you more hyped for it? Is it not? Um, and uh, yeah, guys, until next time, um, it leaves us with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and may the force be with you. See you.